Welcome to Lost in the Woods, a 15-day countdown to the worldwide release of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. In this series, I'm dissecting one game from the Zelda franchise every day with the goal of separating the core Zelda game elements from the fluff. I'll show you how Breath of the Wild is the culmination of 30 years worth of Nintendo defining, losing, rediscovering, and finally perfecting exactly what makes a Zelda game great. After the five-year wait between A Link to the Past and The Ocarina of Time, how long do you think it took to make Majora's Mask? Four years? Three years? Wrong. Miyamoto gave the development team a hard deadline of one single year to turn out Majora's Mask. With such a short time period, how do you even compete with Ocarina of Time? The answer is pretty simple. You don't try. You see, it's incredibly expensive to make large worlds like Hyrule. Expensive in money, and more importantly, expensive in time. They needed to take a very different approach, and guarantee that the new approach revolved around making as little amount of content as possible. Nintendo, being Nintendo, pulled one of their genius Nintendo-style moves by sidestepping the problem entirely. They gave us the exact same characters and built a much less expensive world. Then, they turned their focus toward developing the cheapest content a video game can make. Text. Rather than focus on expanding the physical world, they gave us dialogue. Lots and lots of dialogue. Then they locked us into a three-day time loop so we would be forced to experience the same dialogue and events over and over and over and over. And you would like it. How? Two words. Bomber's Notebook. Majora's Mask is a game that sets you about solving the world's personal problems, even more so than solving the impending doom of the moon crashing into the planet. You end up studying the patterns of the people, making connections, and settling their individual woes in any order. Non-Linear Exploration The genius of this concept, and why Majora's Mask still feels like a Zelda game, is that it's closer to the original core Zelda theme. Discovery through nonlinear exploration. While there is a linear progression through the main plotline, it's pretty short. And despite the foreboding constant reminder that there's a Giga Moon about to crash into the town, it's not actually necessary to progress through the main plot until you really want to, thanks to the unlimited use time travel mechanic. The nonlinear exploration presented is an active exploration into people's lives. It's a brilliant fix for an unsolvable problem. But man, is Majora's Mask weird? Too weird in a lot of ways. It's personal, it's edgy, it doesn't follow the traditional power fantasy at all, and that turned a lot of folks off. In reality, while they brilliantly repurposed the non-linear exploration, Nintendo applied it to something that was very not Zelda on the surface. For the first time, Nintendo found themselves with a disgruntled fanbase. They needed to figure out how to appease their fans, the newfangled Ocarina of Time generation of fans, and it seemed that the only way they could appease them was to make a bigger and more expansive game, one that would be Ocarina of Time 2, so they started making it. But, like I said earlier, Ocarina of Time kinds of games take a long time to build. They're manpower hungry. Nintendo needed a temporary fix while they worked on their next major 3D installment. Come back tomorrow as we dive into the birth of the Zelda fanbase divide. 2D handheld games versus the 3D console games. A split made possible by Nintendo's friends over at Capcom. <laughs>